The broad concept of a skinwalker is of a shapeshifter. <laughs> true you once said you would kill all humans? How does this image make you feel? Do you feel unsettled? Does it look somewhat creepy or just off? Many of you have probably heard of this strange sensation, the feeling of uneasiness when we see something that looks human but isn't. What makes this concept even more interesting is that we seem to feel more disconnected from the subject, the more it resembles us. We aren't really afraid of cartoonish depictions of other humans, but there's a certain point where lightness becomes too much. It's something we all collectively fear. But where does this fear come from? Today's episode will introduce some theories about this concept that you may not be familiar with. I also want to point out that some of these theories discussed later on in the video are pretty wild. I want to reiterate that these do not represent my own views. So let's go ahead and take a deep dive into the uncanny valley. The first instances of this sensation date back to the 1970s, when Japanese roboticist Masahiro Mori noticed how the public's reaction to his work changed over time. At first, people seemed to love his human-like robots when they looked more robot than human. However, when his newer models began to look more human than robot, the public's reaction was less enthusiastic. Today, one of the most popular examples in the field of robotics is Sophia, the first robot to gain citizenship of a country. When the topic of the uncanny valley comes up, Sophia is one of the first things people usually think about. Hollywood has made many strides in special effects over the past few decades. Computer-generated imagery, or CGI, is one of the quickest technologies in the film industry to evolve in such a short period of time as CGI continues to get better. The faces seem to get creepier. You see, bad CGI can oftentimes look photoreal when paused, but in motion, looks wrong. And there are lots of examples in movies these days that have this, where we try to create CGI characters as humans, but we kind of just like aim for it and just fail. Sid from Toy Story might be nightmare fuel in its own right, but not in the same way as young Jeff Bridges in the 2010 film Tron Legacy. At least we can separate Sid from reality. The young Jeff Bridges has been said by many to blend the lines of reality too much. It somehow looks too real and too fake at the same time. There are many examples of this, and it continues to look even stranger as the technology gets better. Where does this uneasiness come from? Could it be an evolutionary fear that's passed down? We already see many instances of this. Human beings are almost entirely connected by a collective fear of things that killed us off earlier in our primal eras. The fear of the dark, spiders, snakes, rats, insects, all of these fears are intrinsic to the human experience in varying degrees. One primal fear that's interesting when analyzing the uncanny valley is our fear of others. The paranoia we share about other human beings that we don't trust 
It's the same fear that powers our need to install security cameras and alarm systems in our homes. We are designed to protect ourselves and those we love, but from what exactly? These primal fears originate somewhere, and so much is unknown about our past as a species. Before written history, all we really have is the fossil record to look to, as well as archaeological research and speculation. Is it possible that in humanity's early years, something was hunting us down? Something that looked just like us? An interesting theory suggests that somewhere in our evolutionary past, a super predator with the ability to mimic humans attempted to wipe out our species. There are many ideas as to what this mimic might have been. Some people think it could have been some kind of ancient alien species. This ties into the ancient alien theory, which suggests that ancient extraterrestrials helped us evolve using their own DNA. If something like this actually happened, maybe this alien species looked more like us than apes did. The uncanny valley could be a chilling reminder of our alien forefathers. Others take on a more down-to-earth perspective, no pun intended, based on Native American folklore, skinwalkers. The skinwalker is a legend that originates in the Navajo tradition. To put it simply, it is an animal that has the ability to take human form. The specifics vary depending on where you go or who you talk to. Where I come from, skinwalkers are animals that hide in the forest waiting for unsuspecting human visitors. If a human is spotted in the distance, they will replicate the voice of your loved ones to draw you in closer. If you're close enough to be seen by them, they will take human form. Did something like the skinwalker actually exist? If so, could it be the reason we are so uncomfortable with human mimicry? Another theory that can easily tie into the super predator concept are the reptilians. Again, armed himself with an AK-47 and a pistol over this past weekend and said that it was uh, because of a battle against lizard people. The man told law enforcement that uh, President Trump had spoken to him, called him specifically to warn him about this. To this day, there are people that believe these creatures control our culture by becoming politicians and going into public office. Some even believe that they are what makes up the Illuminati. Another fascinating idea is the theory of time traveling post humans. I heard this idea from a friend when I told them I was working on this video. I did not find much information about this online but I find it interesting enough to be worth mentioning. He said he had once heard that the uncanny valley could be caused by future versions of ourselves. The story goes like this. Thousands of years into the future, when human beings evolved to look different than us, they discovered the technology that makes time travel possible. Human society at this point became a painful and grim existence. Humans were collectively questioning their place in the universe. A group of radical individuals decided the only way to make the world a better place was to destroy themselves, destroy humanity. They did this by going back in time to the days of the early humans and started a mass war with the sole purpose of killing us all off. Due to the conditions of the planet being vastly different, they failed, lost the war, and eventually died off. If we are going by the mimic theory, there are a multitude of things that it could have been. Maybe it was some kind of unknown species that looked like us. Wait a minute, aren't we forgetting something? We weren't the only humans that existed at that time. The Neanderthal was a subspecies of archaic humans, 
that evolved from the same species we evolved from. Because of this, Neanderthals are considered to be our sister species and our closest human relative. The mystery of their extinction has yet to be solved. For many years, it has been believed that we pushed the Neanderthals out of existence in a brutal war that spanned over 100,000 years. However, more recent research suggests that interbreeding with Homo sapiens could be the main culprit. Regardless of how they died off, the fossil record confirms the brutal relationship between our species and theirs, as well as the existence of a 100,000 year war. Neanderthals were extremely dangerous skilled fighters and the number one threat to our existence. When looking at modern depictions of Neanderthals, it gives off the same uncanny valley effect. Could the Neanderthals be the reason we experience this sensation? What happened during this 100,000 year war? Were we always at war with each other? Or was there something else there? An alien? A skinwalker? A reptilian? Is it possible that we worked with the Neanderthals to fight off a common enemy? The most terrifying thing about all these questions is that we may never have an answer. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this episode of Terminal X, and just like always, if you want to see more content like this, please like the video, subscribe, and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I release new content. Thanks guys, have a good one.